Hello, everyone. Good evening and welcome to Lima Online, uh, a new experimental series in which we weekly organize online events that could vary from discussions with artists, uh, screenings of work from our collection, uh, talks, uh, to sometimes reflect on the current situation from a technological and artistic point of view, but sometimes just also enjoy seeing art uh, semi-collectively online. And uh, tonight, I'm very much looking forward to a talk we're going to have. I uh, have invited three guest speakers, Florian Kramer, Heath Bunting, and Joan Heimskerk from the artist duo uh, Jody, to engage in a discussion that was about to happen uh, about one and a half months ago at Varia in Rotterdam. And uh, Florian, uh, who will moderate this talk, will just like will uh, briefly um, contextualize uh, this um, event and, and, and see where we're going to uh, continue the talk. Uh, so I think it's time for me to just invite them to the screen and uh, thank you so much Heath, Joan and Florian for um, accepting this invitation and um, yeah please enjoy the talk and thank you so much. The, the screen is yours. Okay as the moderator maybe I will just uh, grab the attention and the microphone. So um, I would like to introduce for the audience who is not familiar, who might not be familiar with uh, all the artists uh, here on the panel. Um, Joan Hemskak and Heath Bunting. Um, uh, Joan, uh, Heath, uh, you first met and collaborated in the late 1990s in uh, the context of uh, net art, the first generation uh, net artists. Although I think, and we have to discuss that maybe you also came from very different angles. It was a very diverse group. And uh, uh, to just recently, um, Sanika mentioned it in her introduction, there was an event in Rotterdam, which was actually for about preparing for the apocalypse and um, for the breakdown of civilization, for the breakdown of infrastructures. Um, and um, this was organized by a local Rotterdam collective called the Fire Brigade for the Apocalypse. And Heath was invited as, let's say, a senior um, advisor, as uh, someone who's uh, been working on this topic uh, since uh, the beginning of his artistic activities in the 1990s. And um, then there was this moment when uh, yeah, several, let's say, alternative infrastructures were discussed, also, let's say, off the grid infrastructure. So um, how can we prevent uh, to be, uh, be ten dependent on electronic infrastructures when an actual breakdown of uh, um, infrastructures is happening and um, there was a moment where Joan was in the audience and said uh, Heath I think what you're proposing uh, are Boy Scouts tactics huh? <laughs> and uh, that was this moment where we didn't really continue um, but there was also another thing Heath that you said at this event which was that you said uh, don't believe um, the preppers um, don't believe the people who think they have a plan in the case of a breakdown because uh, the particular quality, and correct me if I'm, if I'm saying it wrong, if I'm uh, making a wrong paraphrase, the, the actual quality of the breakdown is that you cannot predict it. Uh, it's an unpredictable situation. So everyone who's, who, who thinks they are prepared, they're not prepared. That's what you said, right? So I've, I've had a suspicion, uh, or I had a suspicion earlier on that um, a lot of medical staff or would, had had been dying in China and probably would uh, succumb to um, infection. And in, in fact, um, today you have uh, three members of the British government, including Boris Johnson, who've been uh, advising advising the population on, on how to avoid coronavirus. And he's he's critically ill in hospital with coronavirus. And so are two other top government. Uh, uh, politicians and uh, the way I'd explain this is that um, in two ways if you want to uh, be responsive to any new situation you have to cultivate constantly cultivate uh, beginners mind so the opposite opposite of that is ex, ex, expertise um, so for instance if you imagine you're a doctor and you're an expert uh, with um, infection or treating disease you do that when you're at work you don't have to deal with that when you're at home or when you're at the supermarket so you have an overconfidence that uh, you'll be protected because you are protected in your profession 
but when 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 there's a pandemic that confidence that training will be a negative a negative factor in your survivability um, this is also illustrated in uh, survival survival situations where the first people to die are generally the people that have had survival training and they couldn't consider themselves to be the experts and just rush off without any kind of observation of the actual situation and um, end up end up injuring or die die being killed uh, before the the people that you would uh, consider um, the most likely candidates you know people that have, have afraid of going out have little experience with uh, adventure adventure sports etc etc no military training these are the people that often uh, survive the longest because they sit they sit still and they're observant of their environment and their situation so that's what i was trying to say um at the talk of barrier that don't prepare too much you know maybe prepare in all, all different sorts of directions at unexpected ones um ones that don't make sense um, so general kind of a strategy of play will give you the greatest survivability and that's why children you know that's what they do they you know to enter adult life they spend all of their you know 10 16 years just playing that's preparing them for problem solving yeah and um one of the assumptions Back then, you already mentioned uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic, and you called it a pandemic. And you said at this this very moment, I guess that uh, uh, probably a thousand people are running around here who are already infected and don't know it. And that was that was very prophetic, right? That that was uh, on I think on 16th of February. Um, and and as we know, um, yes, that in, was indeed the situation. But so in a way, yeah, uh, I was. When I was at Varia, I was already on, uh, I was actually taking part in a pandemic rehearsal, but uh, secretly or discreetly, I didn't, uh, as far as I remember, I didn't um, tell anybody at Varia that I was doing that. And um, also I've uh, been preparing for abrupt climate change. So I, to get, actually get to Varia, I hitchhiked from the UK, assuming that the flights would be disrupted by the climate storms. And they were, they were cancelled. And I actually, a lot of the ferries were cancelled as well. And also along the way, I was assuming that everybody that I was uh, in meeting were infected with coronavirus. So I was, uh, this was February, and so I was hitchhiking outside a lot, um, had to sleep outside. And uh, I was eat. my typical meal would be uh, a, a tin uh, of baked beans eaten on the side of the road with a spoon. Yeah, that's how I got to Rotterdam. That's how I lived there. Um, just eating pre-pandemic pre food, um, food that had been created before the pandemic or or cooking my own food in, in, a, in a kitchen uh, that, where I stayed. Um, so it was quite a rigorous uh, rehearsal. And, you know, I actually was seduced into uh, in relaxing, relaxing my, um, guard at the barrier because somebody offered me some soup <laughs> so so uh hungry i actually ate some food that other somebody else had prepared for me and fortunately uh, i didn't get sick <laughs> but um the pandemic rehearsal is actually part of your portfolio so one if, if one looks on your website irrational.org you can easily find it in the internet there's a work portfolio and pandemic rehearsal is one of the works uh, that you have been doing for quite some time when was the first pandemic rehearsal that you did it was 2006 and i went to a went to a cave with my work partner at the time in an island in scotland so it was very kind of uh, romantic escapism um, which you can you can do you know as an individual without children or as a couple without children you can run off to a run off to a cave and live without a washing machine and without youtube but uh when you have two little kids uh youtube and washing machine essential uh hu basic human rights so um it's, it's been interesting because i had twins and that meant uh yeah five years ago that uh I couldn't get out of the house for longer than an hour each day. 
most in the first two years I I hardly got out of the house at all um, was totally socially isolated and had no money and um, we thought this was somehow unique to our, our our situation but now you find that most people in the UK are only let out the house one hour a day and they're totally socially isolated and they have no money um, so it turns out that we were we were very effective peppers and futurologists and we were ahead of our time and now we are still socially isolated and poor um, and we get out of the house maybe uh, two hours a day but we we live uh, by the sea and we can go to the beach we have a back garden uh, we're growing our own food um, and a lot of other people are now kind of around here are adopting that as well so it's actually nice it's very relaxing down here we are we are kind of normal we're part of the norm now instead of being the exception um, but this brings me to a question for Joan because I think this this might have been the point at Varia where you said uh, Heath aren't you talking Boy Scout tactics right going to a cave is that the solution uh, yeah I think I want to do some uh, performance now uh, uh, actually, that will explain uh, the situation we are in now, the situation we, uh, I was predicting. Uh, and actually, uh, as we all listen to the World Health Organization now, you have to wash your hands. Um, here is a piece of soap. It's a brick. It's a... Uh, the recipe comes from uh, the Syrian capital of uh, Aleppo and they invented it like 4,000 years ago. It's pure natural. I'm quite allergic to soap, but at least I can wash my hands. And the World Organization says like 20 seconds. So yeah, it works. It doesn't smell too bad. It's You really have to wash your hands good for good hygiene. And 20 seconds is a long, long time. By the way, this brick uh, is like this piece of soap, this Aleppo soap, is, is a brick like the old internet, full of pixels, bytes, whatever you like. So, now I'm not uh, in the situation to uh, have this Aleppo soap. At the beginning of the 20th century, we invented this piece of soap. And I hope the camera's upside down. Uh, yeah. It's called Lux. And for most people in the, after the First World War, uh, the, uh, the, the Spanish flu broke out and millions of people died and they had like a mass production of this soap, which is smooth. Uh, the only way we got it like uh, mass produced was to get the sources of this soap in South Africa and the rest of Africa. Uh, so it's a bit of a Dutch history also. That, and they became bigger and bigger. Now they are the firm Unilever. Maybe you heard of it. Uh, as I said, I'm quite allergic to soap, so I have to have some protection for this soap. So I got this smooth latex gloves, and I will wash my hands. or the latex gloves. Okay. It has the comparison with the internet. It got more smooth. We got more advertisement. And the population on the internet kind of grew. But 
Of course, we're still in the 20, uh, 20th century. And what happened at the last decade, uh, we made other things of soap. And here I got an example. It looks like an oil can. It's slime. It comes from China. And it's based with some indefinite substances. Some are really poisonous. But one of the main ingredients is soap. You can wash your hands with it. You can play and we can learn our children how to play making funny movies with this. And wash your hands for 20 seconds. And if you're lucky, you can also reuse that one. But now it gets more dangerous and I have to protect myself a bit more. I'm in a Syrian refugee camp and all I have is some dental. So I use it to wash my hands for 20 seconds. And as I see, I'm protected. I have the luxury to wear gloves and to kill my bacteria of the gloves. So. So, yeah, that was about it. That's what I tried to explain about the World Health Organization advice of washing your hands. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, if you're talking, for example, which kind of infrastructures are available in the case of the breakdown, in the case of the break, uh, crisis, it's not just a question of, let's say, high-tech infrastructures, but even the most basic infrastructures, so, such as SOAP, you know, where uh, there is social privilege and uh, where things are taken for granted that shouldn't be taken for granted. Uh, Yes, but I'm talking about the internet and in case of the apocalypse, we have the luxury to use the internet. We take it for granted. We don't look at it anymore. And the internet is a, is a really interesting tool. I mean, if, if you want to, <laughs> to search, to If you want to search for uh, some very old recipe of soap, you can do it. But it gets more and more fuzzy when, when you want to have the ingredients of the last yellow products. Uh, and I think that's the stage where now we have the luxury to use the internet and even in a lockdown, uh, we can afford to to get ourselves socially distance as a net artist i mean uh we were socially distanced by by the fact by making net art from the start so when i made the uh 
the remark about boy scouting is that uh, yes, we all have to learn how to to handle with basic knowledge, but sometimes we forgot that we have recipes 4,000 years old. Uh, and most of the people are, aren't aware of that and don't even look it up online to, to see those recipes. Basically, all they want to do is have fun, play with slime and wash their hands. Yes, but on the other hand, uh, what struck me um, when we had this discussion uh, in February, right, we were assuming that say that's the first thing that would um, break down in a crisis situation would actually be the electronic infrastructure. Um, and now almost the opposite happened. Yeah. Um, so let's say the, the, the physical analog uh, social infrastructure that partly broke down in the sense that there, uh, there is uh, the lockdown, but what is still working is the internet. So which reminds me both of your Boy Scout remark, uh, Joan, and uh, Heath of your remark that you cannot be prepared because something else will happen. Well, um, we're seeing an oversupply of energy, for instance. Um, the oil market, uh, the, the, price of, the price of oil is falling to uh, almost zero, and in some cases negative. And um, you're seeing it it's stored on ships or offshore. Um, people are storing wherever they can, but they're getting paid to take it away. They're not buying it. They're, uh, they're being paid to, paid to consume it. And uh, also, this will probably uh, apply to uh, renewables as well, you know, solar and uh, wind. Of course, uh, coal, um, and oil, oil powered gas. Um, and with an oversupply, you're going to probably see a deflationary spiral and, uh, and supply shocks because um, companies won't actually be able to afford to produce something for zero or negative cost. And so they will either stop stop producing that or go bankrupt. Um, so for the moment, uh, things seem uh, seem fairly normal, but in the background, uh, think you know supply chains um, and industry are falling apart. So whether we can uh, maintain maintain uh, the internet is is reliably is very questionable. I don't. Sorry. No, I totally agree, because I'm actually looking at some, uh, some boat traffic from the place I am in, and recently, and I'm, I'm following the boat tra traffic now for a year, since last April, worldwide, uh, since some months, basically the, the, the cargo ships, the raw oil ships, are going full power and they are marked red on a map and while there were some oil ships a year ago i mean there was also always some traffic it now seems like an exponential growth of oil ships worldwide and we don't see it because we are on the internet and we are using more and more power to, to get our machines running our devices uh, use a lot of energy and maybe we have alternatives. We can have uh, electricity from the sun or the wind, but most of these uh, uh, are produced uh, in China at the moment at very cheap labor. And I don't think we are like aware of it that also that production can stop. And where is our green energy then? And where is our internet then? So it's, it's kind of a, an innocence uh, to say, okay, we're, we're all dependent on the internet, but we, Indeed, we don't see the infrastructures anymore. What's behind uh, our desktop? 
Yes, and we can say right now we are just in the first chapter or maybe just even in the prelude, like the, the, the foreword of the first chapter of this whole story that's going to unfold. And uh, the fact that people are now taking for, uh, for granted that, for example, you can shift work from offices uh, to online conferences that might very soon end. Yeah, Maybe, maybe uh, we cannot predict how long it will take, but uh, over a couple of weeks or months, uh, this will be no longer feasible. Right? I mean, already the fact that we're doing this over Jitsi and there were some concerns by Lima because Jitsi is congested in these, these times, uh, already an indication that, that this alternative infrastructure might not work, right? But um, is it then a, 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 um, upon artists uh, to, to kind of e invent these, these alternative infrastructures? Because that was also very much, let's say, the underlying question of the discussion in Rotterdam, right? If, if, if let's say, if uh, industries of capitalism lacks this imagination of thinking up an alternative system and an alternative infrastructure, do we have to do that? Well, I'm, uh, I'm obviously very interested in uh, the pandemic because um, pandem pandemics are, are social, social, social diseases, uh, a virus is a social transaction. So um, as, as artists, I think, um, in this, this scene, a scene I've been in for a long time, we, we, we've mostly been uh, interested in sociability as, uh, as a media. Um, the, the, the main um, opportunity for that was the, the rise of the internet in the 90s, but uh, we all basically kind of uh, social uh, experimenters, and, you know, punks, and so the lockdown for me is it's not it's not just uh, it's not um, a disease prevention measure in the in the nor in a kind of biological sense. Um, for instance, if this was a bacterial outbreak, you you could actually catch it just from the environment, but you actually have to have a transaction with another human being to get the virus, and you for community to enter pandemic mode you have to have a particular social configuration. So I see the lockdown as a, a denial of the failed social configurations of uh, the past, you know, or the current status quo. So it's a lockdown, it's a lockdown of the imagination. It's not really being a lockdown. Uh, there's no locks on your door. There's not police officers standing outside, certainly not around here. Um, so for me, it's, as, as an artist who's been involved in sociability for about 30, 30 years, it's, uh, it's, a mo it's a moment uh, of opportunity um, and imperative to, to find a way out of the lockdown, not just the political lockdown, the economic lockdown, but the lockdown of imagination um, and enter a new, a new, the new reality. You know, it's not even new reality, the, the actual uh, situations we are, truly face, you know, if you strip away the kind of lies of uh, the status quo, you know, we are, we are entering a, a time of economic depression and climate collapse. Um, these are things that you have to address now and people have been in denial of. And if you're going to sit in your house <laughs> for the next three, four, five months, uh, receiving money from the state and thinking everything's going to go back to normal, you're your survivability uh, is going to be zero or close to zero at the end of that because the money's going to stop as we will be in a, a period of uh, rapid climate change and economic depression. There will be no work, there will be no money, there'll be not enough food um, and your lockdown will be uh, terminal. So um, as an artist, somebody who can imagine another future or to see the way things are um i feel quite confident and i feel enthusiastic and i'm trying to encourage other artists to see that they're actually very powerful at, at, at this moment in history and to leave 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 their leave their leave leave their uh, lockdown behind i don't necessarily mean go outside their house because you know i'm growing food in my house and I've been doing that for a year now, so it, it will be necessary to live inside and outside for, for extended periods of time. 
and uh, under duress as well from environmental and, and social social stress. John, would you agree with that? In, in some sense, yes. In some sense, no. I mean, uh, most people are uh, dependent on social structures. And I found out people are more social now with the pandemic online than before. Uh, we all doing, uh, we all want to com communicate and to chat. But to solve the pandemic, I think we hardly need these computers. I mean, we, we need technology uh, to, to find a, a, a vaccine and we need to calculate what are the, uh, the modifications of, of the virus right now. And that's happening, I mean, because uh, it's already mutating all over the world. So it's it, it's not gone in 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 three months. It will it will stay for for at least a very very long time. Uh, like we still have the flu. Maybe it comes in a milder version. Maybe we find a, uh, a medicine. Uh, and I think we we need. Uh, I mean, uh, to find a solution, we we have to. We have to be clever as artists, as uh, scientists, as humans. Uh, sure, uh, in a cave, I mean, the first art we discovered were cave paintings. Uh, but we don't live in a cave anymore. And we have the technology uh, at the moment. And the problem, I agree with, uh, with heat in the sense that, uh, especially this pandemic came because of people are, uh, simple, let me put it simple. They are too packed. They're too close to each other. I mean, uh, and for them also it's, it, I mean, if you live in a rural area, it's yeah, it's very easy to 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 not spread diseases. Or, but if you live in a million uh, million inhabited city and live very close to to each other, uh, but that's the situation now. I mean, we all have ho offspring. I mean, the life standard uh, uh, when we were still in the cave was a lot less than, than we have now. So, yes, I, but I, I, yeah, I do think we, uh, yeah, we need to, uh, to also, yeah, not only uh, look back, but also look forward, let's say, and not isolate yourself. And yeah, even without electricity, please share the, share the knowledge. It seems to me as if you both are actually talking about different things, right? I mean, uh, if I get you both right, then, then Heath is very much talking about this as a kind of um, point zero of a communication system. And really, you, you apparently see it as a breakdown of society, which needs needs a complete reinvention of society. Uh, yeah, where uh, Joan, you now focused rather on how do we deal with this with the, in, in the existing system and with medical science, etc. Right. So it seems as if you have different views on this. Uh, no, I don't think so. It's exactly the same. <laughs> I mean, I think in the situation now, it's like a lot of people suddenly become aware of the of the society we live in, and uh, that take it up. Uh, yeah, if you want or not, 
of uh, we, it will change. There's no doubt to, about it. I mean, uh, so in that sense, I, I it's it, I'm telling the same. It, it's not that I say like, okay, it's it's only the situation now. But but I don't think there's a, a if it breaks down uh, or if there is a change. I mean, the change is continuous. Only it it goes sometimes a bit faster than in other cases. It's because Heath, if I understand you correctly, you see this basically as the beginning of the end of of the entire system that we have at the moment, right? Um, well, I see it as a step change. You know, it's we we've been uh, in the process of uh, eroding our environment for ten thousand years now, um, and it's greatly accelerated uh, with the industrial revolution. And uh, I think uh, our CO two output into uh, the atmosphere has doubled in the past five years or something. So things are speeding up, um, but you will have these kind of step, step change shocks. Um, so for instance, we had one 2007, 2008. Um, but this one is, is going to be significant because you have uh, multiple factors uh, impacting simultaneously. So this is what I learned from uh, having twins is that if you have a problem, um, you can probably deal with it with one child. If you've got two children and two adults present, that's going to probably be four times harder and uh, one problem tends to lead to another and so you've gone from a, a pro one problem back to one or two to four to 16 and uh, dealing with something that's 16 times more difficult than the normal is just impossible and so now we have uh, a pandemic we have uh, economic depression and we're going to have a climate shock due to the reduction of the aerosol masking in the atmosphere um, so that's that's three things <laughs> multiplying together um, however you want to multiply that that's uh, it's probably like 27 or 30 times more difficult than just dealing with one thing um, and that's sounds beyond human and social capacity um, so I don't, I don't see a uh, I don't see most people um, dealing with this very well. Joan, would you agree and and uh, would you join this movement or dis do you disagree? Oh, I totally agree. Uh, actually, I, uh, I'm secretly already joining. I mean, <laughs> I don't live in a big city. I live in a small city, but my country is quite artificial so uh, even uh, yeah a lot of medical plants are aren't growing or are protected uh, and there are laws uh, there are more laws and you get traced everywhere and it's a situation and I would say yeah sure uh, make art but don't be in the, uh, behind the computer all, all the time and uh, yeah it's not that I'm behind the computer all the time I don't do social media so that saves a lot of time I hardly do uh, uh, webcam conferences saves a lot of time uh, so yeah I agree but on the other hand, uh, for, for, for people who can't go outside and in the garden and see some sun, which is a reality for a lot of people, the people who got themselves in a position that they uh, only can go to a supermarket to get some food. Uh, I think, yeah, we also have to uh, look at that. and. Uh, for me, it's very important to to keep making art. And uh, for some people, uh, they make art with, with clay. But, but yeah, I, 
my tools are, are uh, electronic at the moment. But now I have one question because um, you at least agreed uh, on the fact that let's say the pandemic is a kind of new zero day, zero hour of um, a network. An, an artistic networking uh, um, effort and you also brought in uh, Heath at least you, you brought this in and I think Joan you agreed the spirit of punk and DIY and, and, and hacking right um, but isn't that also a comfort zone I mean this is where we're coming from right I mean th this is how we grew up uh, to, to do it the punk DIY hacker way for me too I started as a zine maker when a punk zine maker when I was 13 so yes so isn't it just um Uh, that we go back to the tools and to the approaches that are f familiar to us. And, and isn't that also a psychological thing? So I'm going to talk about my, my, my experience with children. Uh, my, my kids are nearly five now. And my life was, uh, my, when you have children, your, your, value, your values change. But when you've, uh, when you've gone through kind of uh, twin, multiple births at the same time, um, you, you undergo um, a process where all your common sense gets erased. So um, I would defend myself uh, <laughs> by saying I, I've actually probably forgotten uh, the kind of DIY uh, fun of the 90s and the 80s. And also my understanding of how you solve problems, uh, particularly unso unsolvable problems, kind of paradoxical situations no win situations um i now see as a as that you're kind of butting up against against truth so in some ways that you know you want to be outside um but i've also understood that to survive because i am an outdoor survival trainer um to survive you're going to have to be indoors a lot a lot and so that goes against classic common sense of as Joan would would say uh, Boy Scout kind of techniques so for instance I'm growing vegetables in my house so you can see this uh, aluminium behind me I grow potatoes in my house and I can grow potatoes all year round uh, with natural light so if the electricity fails I can still and it and uh, climate change is too harsh outside because of storms or extreme heat i can still grow food in my house i can stay inside you know they, there's the there's the there's the phrase that here yeah, english man's home is his castle and that's that's going to apply to everyone i i, I want to hear john's takes uh, uh, on this because i'm, I'm still r wrestling with this uh, question you know whether let's say the punk art diy hacker however we call it yeah? maybe that was also this kind of overlap between these four cat uh, characteristics was typical and uh, for net art and, and the particular net art approach of, of working but whether we're not just kind of let's say um recycling strategies that we developed in the 80s 90s and uh whether we might be falling into a trap that we're just using them because that's what we know and what we're comfortable with. John, what would you, uh, be your take on that? Uh, yeah, in, in my practice, I mean, uh, I'm now listening to, to, to some, some waves in the, in, in the, in the spectrum who actually, uh, see where your, your, uh, cell phones are. Uh, see uh, where ships are in my surrounding. Uh, so it's it's about hidden structures, and that's the art I make now. And yeah, it will be translated very locally to machines and not to to the internet and uh, worldwide. So. These are tactics to almost see the, the, uh, the bigger network which we are living in uh, on a very local basis. So uh, that somehow changed, but as I said, uh, it's like my, uh, I get very itchy to, to, to still do net art. <laughs> 
and it's 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 like it's like a pencil. I mean, I I like to draw with with code, and but on the other hand, I also like to to to, to look what is changing at the moment, and I know in that the way I worked. Uh, digitally, it's it, it's more local now. But observe, but observing the bigger systems on a very local way, and maybe, and maybe, uh, if things are changing, uh, as artists, we, uh, yeah, we also have to look in smaller networks digitally. This is my a takeaway, uh, right? That um, maybe it would be fair to say for both of you and observing your practice of roughly the last uh, 30 years um, that it has become more local, yeah? uh, maybe even more radically local. I'm not sure if I'm saying the right thing. And maybe the second observation would be that um, Heath, your approach might be more interventionist, whereas uh, Joan, you just, just used the word observation, right? So. Um, observational versus interventionist is, is, and, and both more radically localized and with the pandemic as, let's say, a new kind of um, point zero. Is that the co correct observation to make? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I still do have a phone which is traced by this Wi-Fi. And the big noise you're hearing now, I don't know if you hear it, that are the local boats on the river. And that's our economy right now. So that's, yeah. I don't know what, what will happen in 20 years. Uh, maybe, maybe it's all silent. I, I, I'm not, uh, yeah, I live in the moment. Yeah, what I, what I said is I'm trying to kind of wrap up the, the discussion because also we are at the end of our time. So what uh, strikes me talking to both of you is um, that, uh, let's say, both of you are uh, uh, since that uh, times enmeshed in, in uh, dealing with systems, uh, analyzing systems, intervening with, uh, into systems, uh, in um, uh, observing that there are these kind of zero hours, these, these um, uh, events of uh, disruption, that the one that happened through um, the uh, mass availability of the internet in the 1990s, now another one through the uh, pandemic, but maybe um, that your approaches differ because Jones is more observational and Heath US is more um, uh, interventionist, uh, but effectively you're dealing um, with the same issues. Is that, would that be fair to say, or dis do you disagree? So uh, you, you wouldn't have a, a monolithic strategy. You would uh, you would try something out. You'd be experimental, and then you'd you'd see the results. So you'd have a, a kind of feed, feedback feedback uh, mechanism, um, and that's how you'd main, maintain your stability as well. So from day to day, you try things out, and uh, you see what the results were, and. Uh, and you see if you're successful and um you know one thing to remember is you're, you're saying that um we may be re repeating repeating uh repeating ourselves from the 80s and 90s but uh we were right <laughs> you know and um the things that we were saying in the 80s and the 90s um this they, they came true and but we were silenced uh, either because we were a minority or because we were actively silenced and censored. Um, 
so yeah sorry um it's a process of observation and also uh, intervention and both joan and i do that we're that's a kind of punk uh, provocation and and a way to develop uh, knowledge and wisdom as the energy supply fails um you also have a failure of uh, a shortage of in intellectual energy and you will see a contraction in the in the vocabulary of people and their imagination um also words words will transform their meaning um as as value for instance um you know the the net art uh scene in the 90s was a was was part of a revolution and as a rev in a revolution all values change or most values change so that means that it it doesn't make any sense you know i i was a uh, i was there i don't understand what happened and that that shows that that was um a crisis a crisis of um comprehension and description and i'd say that there's been almost no effective um retrospectives or historic accounts of uh, what happened in the 90s with the net with the net art scene and um that's not to criticize uh historians and curators that's 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 a that's a result of a, a true revolution and that's what we're facing now so um our values and actually the meaning and uh our vocabulary will change uh, quite considerably and you can see this in uh in in the name in the names of things so for instance one of the one examples i like to give is the is the word organic it's uh when you go into a supermarket an organic supermarket you're coming expecting to come out with um purely natural products um but the the term organic originally came from describing uh folk machinery the first the first machinery that um people from villages or small towns experienced was the church organ and so anything that was unnatural um a threat uh threat to skill kind of skill craft was described as organic and then of course this this progressed through in the industrial revolution to such a degree that any not just machines were considered organic or process, manufacturing processes but even the human body was described as organic so all of our organs in our body was considered to be small machines um, and then because of the demise of uh, industrialization um, and the kind of reimagining of our relationship with the world, that term persisted. And so you've seen a complete reversion, uh, inversion, I should say, of the term organic, which originally meant something quite threatening and technological and machinic, and now is quite comfy and uh, and healthy for people. So that took that that process took a uh, hundred years or so, or two hundred years. But I think within you know within a year or six months you're going to see the inversion of values and also of words, and this is going to mean this is going to make people very socially and individually men mentally uh, unstable because when the meaning of words changes so rapidly, you you will become schizophrenic as a society or as an individual, and you're you're enter into a totally crazy zone where things don't make any sense. Even to intellectuals. <laughs> what is your take? <laughs> Do you agree that that language will change? Uh, sure. Uh, language is kind of paradoxical because it always. Uh, I mean, it, even every web page now still has a head and a body. It's a lot of gibberish, but we the basic thing is still that in every web web page. Uh, uh, if you look at the source, there's still a head and a body. Uh, so we use this uh, very common English language, which isn't my natural language, so I'm a bit more clumsy in expressing myself. Uh, in, uh, in, in English, because I'm not a native. I mean, I use the computer also uh, not from a kid. I mean, I was forbidden to use computers because I broke them down all the time. <laughs> um, but yes, my, my, my dad used to work with first computers. Uh, actually, he was uh, looking how, how uh, 
um, mushrooms would um, uh, could be grown in, in greenhouses instead of in caves. So, so we always had this computer paper, and and there is a lot of language. I mean, uh, based uh, change, and and but yeah, partly dyslexic. It's not my my best point to uh, to uh, to be a linguistic expert. But I think languages will change. But uh, on the fun. Uh, but it also get we get less words. I totally agree. I mean, because if we all have to speak English, of course we get less words. We forget all the words in our own language. I'm not sure whether there's any takeaway from this discussion. Um, um, may, maybe well, maybe two two takeaways. Um, uh, first of all, that um, this we we all expect that let's say the the disruption or uh, the systemic change um, introduced by this crisis won't be over in a year. Uh, that's a clear takeaway from this discussion. Uh, it will be profound. Um, and um, yeah, talking to two artists from the first net art uh, generation at least as profound as the internet was then, but even more profound. Uh, maybe your expectations also vary on a certain scale, um, but uh, uh, there is a, a, a common sense that we are really dealing with a paradigm shift of yeah, society, of culture, and that is not just about technology, it is about how we communicate, how we live, uh, how we survive, right? Um, is, would that be a, a fair takeaway on, on which we could, uh, could agree? Um, Yes, uh, and that we also say artists and art is now just instrumental in this, this process uh, because it is one of the few areas of yeah, thinking, activity, uh, knowledge development where you know, th these, these things can be radically uh, imagined and ra radically developed. Would, would you agree or is that a romanticist uh, position? Okay. So I've been, uh, sometimes I teach, I teach at art schools. So, uh, I teach as an outdoor survival instructor. And sometimes I teach um, just as a kind of old dog professional. And uh, often younger, younger people say, how have you managed to survive as an artist for 30 years? Um, asking for the kind of tricks of the trade, how to get funding, how to get attention, how to, carry on making interesting work. And I say, you've got it, you've got it completely the wrong way around. Um, I, art enabled me to survive. You know, when I encountered art and artists for the first time, I was homeless, uh, living on the street with nothing. And um, I probably wouldn't have got it to, to be on 40. Um, and uh, I've got well beyond that now. And that's because art and art, the art world and art consciousness and art imagination has enabled me to, to survive. And so now we're in a critical period of survival, not just as individuals, but as society, as a species. Um, and yeah, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna apply for funding to get out of the situation. Um, we're not gonna get jobs in advertising agencies. Um, we're not gonna get jobs as professors, you know, we, it's the other way around to survive this situation. Um, you will need to be an artist. You will need to have, be able to wake up every day um, and with the new imagination and try things out and be able to not just accept, but also to um, celebrate failure. Um, for me, art yeah. is about creating good questions and questions uh, maybe there's an oversupply of them at the moment. <laughs> maybe that's where that's maybe where we're going to fail. Maybe people are looking for answers, um, but that's not our jobs as artists. It's not to produce answers. So um, I was I've been uh, the 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 military have tried to recruit me several times. Um, one of the every time it's it's very 
revealing their uh, their, their understanding and uh, their positioning and their valuation of artists. And one of the last times they approached me, um, I asked them um, why why they why why they were so interested in artists. And this this they were trying to recruit me to um, basically start be part of a British artist army to fight foreign artists um, involved in uh, kind of undermining them and potentially assassinating them and uh, which was very <laughs> very uh, extreme job offer and uh, I said why do you find uh, artists so threatening and uh, they replied that um, because artists uh, can imagine uh, imagine another reality another future. Joan? No, I totally agree. I should be very, as a military person, I mean, you should be very, very afraid of art. <laughs> and as a, as a normal person, you should look and listen to art. Because sometimes it's, yeah, uh, you can quote a lot of people and sometimes then first you need to have a disaster to, to uh, admire art. The personal word, I, I totally agree. This is also something that I've been discussing with friends of mine that we see, for example, just, you know, if you see people on the street who are not changing their behavior, who don't seem to be aware of what's going on. And we both blamed it on the fact that not everyone is used to think in, in, you know, in, in stories and hypotheses and scenarios and what could happen, you know, what, what, what could happen in this case, et cetera, et cetera. And that's very much what you do as an artist. Uh, and, and yeah, so, so I think having this, this capability is now really a matter of survival. Yeah? And that's not romantic at all. It's, it's a very pragmatic thing. Yeah. Um, is, is that, <laughs> is it okay if you end it like that? Or do you have any more additions? <laughs> <laughs> all right, <laughs> let's all let's all uh, take our soap and wash wash our hands after this. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Florian, Heath, and Joan, for this interesting talk. Um, I think, Joan, what you just said nearly at the end uh, is a nice concluding thought that uh, we need art more than ever, or that sometimes it's it needs for some drastic change in society to be able to enjoy art or to see the importance of art. For me personally, I enjoyed very much seeing that you're actually a bit more on the same page than I initially thought. Um, I think you find each other in what Florian already said in this uh, radical way of going local nowadays. And I think that really shows uh, quite some guts for artists who uh, in the 90s like um, gave shape to the way they thought the internet had to be. And, uh, uh, by going like global in a way and connecting like worldwide and now aiming for a time for more introspection and reflection. And I think you're complementary in, in the way you do this. Uh, Joan, you, in line with your work, look more into the, the structure that entails this and Heath, you look more into the human being, the position of like social interaction within this structure. Um, so I think we came to a full, a full circle. Um, and I'd love to open up now uh, uh, the discussion for the audience. So uh, please ask your questions by chat and we'll be here for another 20 minutes or as long as, as, long as it's needed to answer your questions. So uh, feel free and uh, hope you can engage in this conversation. Uh, thank you so much. questions by chat and we'll be here for another 20 minutes or as long as, as, long as it's needed to answer your questions so uh, feel free and uh, hope you can engage in this conversation uh, thank you so much okay so uh, we are live now um, and I see that there has been a kind of lively feedback on YouTube by uh, many people um, but not yet questions. So we are here with everyone, with uh, Heath, with uh, Joan, uh, and um, feel free to type something in the YouTube so, uh, chat uh, yeah, window and we're trying um, to pick up your questions. I see that there has been a kind of lively feedback on YouTube by uh, many people. Um, so we are here with everyone, with uh, Heath, with uh, Joan, uh, and um, 
feel free to type something in the YouTube uh, chat uh, window and we're trying to pick up your questions. I see the first question is in and uh, it concerns the medium YouTube. And uh, that was already something that was going on during your discussion that people said, why the hell are you streaming this on YouTube? Uh, isn't it kind of sad that um, uh, an effort that started in radically rethinking uh, media in the 1990s uh, now ends up on YouTube? during your discussion that people said, why the hell are you streaming this on YouTube? Uh, isn't it kind of sad that um, uh, an effort that started in radically rethinking uh, media in the 1990s uh, now ends up on YouTube? Is anyone speaking? <laughs> Keith, do you want to take the question? Well, my position, you know, obviously, um, no, I don't support it. I do watch YouTube in the evenings, just, uh, you know, after I've done my washing up and stuff i'll see what's going on in the mainstream world um but i i would uh you know we 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 solved all these problems in the 90s and the 80s you know we solved the problems in the 80s by having our own radio stations and tv stations you want to take the question well my position you know obviously um no i don't support it and um, there's YouTube another question for you. Um, uh, you know, Heath, uh, how do you grow uh, potatoes when uh, water supplies run out? Well, I would say, you know, the first two things you want to be doing now is uh, making compost and capturing rainwater. By having own radio stations and TV stations. And um, there's another question for you, um, Keith. How do you grow uh, potatoes when uh, water supplies run out? Well, I would say, you know, the first two things you want to be doing now is uh, making compost and capturing rainwater. John, do you have a take on the YouTube question? Or is it is it a relevant question for you? Because I, it is also something that I... Uh, I have a personal memory of um, in 2002, um, uh, you, Dirk, and I were invited uh, to give a lecture in a media art center in Tokyo. Um, and there were works by uh, Japanese artists in the exhibition alongside your uh, works. And I remember that um, you were kind of shocked to see that all the works by the Japanese artists were on existing uh, digital platforms. They were no longer reinventing or uh, imagining their own platforms, but they were all takes on existing commercial internet platforms early in the 2000s. But it's also a shift that I saw in your own work as Jody, uh, where from a certain point on, you, you took on existing uh, systems uh, and um, also dealt with the internet in its commercialized form as we now uh, know it uh, today. By the way, we have a really kind of weird psychedelic effect where the YouTube um, broadcast is delayed by like half a minute and we are hearing like multiple echoes of ourselves. That's so completely psychedelic uh, experience and bear with us if we are uh, talking slowly or like stutterers because we are hearing all these echoes of ourselves in, in our heads. I can't sign into youtube to, to reply to any of the chat i don't have an account reply 
Who's growing garlic inside? Mm. Oh, I think we lost Joan. I was still wondering, Joan, if you could answer the YouTube question. I'm curious, but I don't know if you're still with us. Uh, I hear you now. I had to restart everything. So I don't, I didn't hear any question. Do you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. No, that's Okay, right. sorry. So, so I passed out. I yeah. passed out. Okay. Um, I was still wondering, John, if you could answer the YouTube question. I'm curious. But no, no, I have to repeat the question. I have to repeat the question because she didn't hear it. So, so, um, and, and there, there are two um, uh, related questions. I see the one concerns, let's say, the use of YouTube as a commercial medium, whether this is kind of bankruptcy declaration for net art, but then Joan, I mentioned uh, an episode with you in uh, Japan in 2002 when uh, you were faced with Japanese artists who only worked with existing commercial services. Sorry, Florian, I don't hear you anymore. And how you were kind of culture shocked by that. Um, but then there's also a question of ownership here. And I think that the question is related. It's originally a question for Heath. It's that, well, growing potatoes in your own house, you can do that if you are the owner of your house. But what is Sorry, it, um, uh, you know, you're forced to live I don't hear you. and the owner reclaims the space. You know? Yeah, I don't own my own house. Yeah. I've had to move house three, three times in the past three years. Hmm. But I do, own, I do own several sheds. I keep building sheds on different pieces of land. And uh, I've got, I, own, I own about 20 pieces of land now. So if anyone wants any free land in the UK, I, I'm happy to give it away. Yeah. You can't hear me. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think, I think YouTube is censoring Joan or something like that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I hear you now, but I had to restart for 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 a tenth time, and I only hear like like four and five minutes, and then and then it's gone. Can you hear me now, John? No. Yeah. No, Someone asked what the uh, silver stuff in the background was. That's uh, that's yeah. reflective reflective uh, covering to uh, concentrate light onto the potatoes yeah. I'm growing inside. I don't use electricity. I don't hear you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's gone. Can you hear me now, John? So we already see the collapse of infrastructures, right? Uh, it is already happening. The, 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 the alternative systems that we're using in this uh, case, Jitsi Meet, are not working. They're, they're, they're collapsing in the moment where you try to rely on them. Well, Google and uh, Gmail, they've had massive outages today. Yeah. Do you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you all the time, but you can't hear us. Do you hear me? We already seen the collapse of infrastructure. This is already happening. The, the alternative systems that we're using in this uh, case that you need are not working. They're, they're, they're collapsing in the moment where you would try to rely on them. Is there anything else we still have to discuss? Or are we going to are we going to leave it at this complete mess? I, yeah. I have to be. I have to admit, I don't even know myself where I am anymore. <laughs> uh, is anyone hearing me right now? Cut off performance. Yeah. Is anyone hearing me now? Yeah, oh, yeah, I can hear you, Joan. Yeah, Joan, we hear you, but yeah. you don't hear us, so... No, yeah. I hear you now. Oh, you do? <laughs> you do, but after five minutes it crashes, and I don't hear anything. I heard something about net art, and, and then it stopped. I don't even know myself where I am anymore. <laughs> so I think, I think we should just take this as a, as a performance. This is kind of weird life cut up yeah. <laughs> of this medium. <laughs> Yeah, Joan, we hear you, but yeah. we don't hear you. <laughs> well, I'm hearing you now. Oh, you do. Well, Joan, if you hear us, do you have any concluding thoughts on whatever it is, either YouTube or the discussion on that part? Just give it a go and do a shout out. <laughs> okay, I missed the whole discussion. I don't know if you see me. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's all uh, about YouTube. Yeah. Uh, great on streaming but it says now my 
Uh, well, Joan, if you hear us, do you have any concluding thoughts on whatever? <laughs> I got this pop-up that uh, you go, your microphone okay. appears to be noisy. Uh, uh, yeah. I hear you now. Your microphone appears to be noisy. Yeah, got something like that. Don't appear to be noisy. Uh, Who's Julie? <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, that's something like that. Uh, yeah, now it works. I see you. <laughs> it's finished now. It's sort of finished. We're still there. I see you. Uh, I see your hands. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave it at that. And yeah. I'm gonna. What was the net art question? That, forget about the net art question. Forget about everything. We're gonna end this performance. And I want to thank you so much. And. Um, <laughs> Hope to have some of you back and any time, and we will be back next week again on YouTube at eight and uh, with modern fairy tales and I don't even know what. So I'm gonna just like cheers to everyone and thanks so much. For, I'm, I'm yeah, thanks to Heath, Florian, and Joan. That was amazing. <laughs> bye bye. Take care. Forget about the net question. Forget about everything. We're gonna end this performance.